Welcome back to the MX-5 build. Now this isn't episode eight. This is gonna be an overview of the complete vehicle, as you can see here. Um, the reason we haven't got episode eight right now is because we're gonna do that in a month or so's time, once we've done testing. We've thrown this together to get out there and test that new gearbox because we need to chuck a couple of thousand miles on it before we can put it into production. So we had to sort of rush that process through. We're then gonna strip it down, powder coat all the bracketry, and I'm gonna do a full build for episode eight in depth of putting the vehicle together. So this is the complete MX-5 overview and spec. And at the end of this, we're gonna hand this over to a well-known, I don't know, car person, shall we call him, um, that everyone will know, and he's gonna do a test drive on this vehicle and talk through and tell us if he likes it or not. So stay tuned and let's go. Let's start with under the bonnet. So this is our 26 kilowatt hour LG battery pack, as you saw us build on the episode seven. Now everything is internal on this pack. We have 10 LG modules in series, and Ryan battery management system. We have two contactors and pre-charge system. We also have the contactor for the Hyper 9 system as well. All built within this pack with two, a couple of high voltage connections on the bottom and a data connection. We have our coolant pipes coming in the front here. We have a really nice VW OEM radiator in the front with water pump. Now these are readily available and these are the sort of items that are gonna get damaged by stone chips over time in the future. Radiators fail, so we stuck OEM, nothing custom, so it's an off-the-shelf replacement. If you had to take this car in for service and maintenance as such, anyone could replace that part. We also have a brake vacuum system. Now this is a standard brake vacuum pump that's fitted to a range of vehicles and it's produced by Bosch so once again it's an easy replaceable item that you can buy from most motor factors. We have a basically a valve block with a sensor to shut the pump down when it gets to vacuum pressure and we have a storage tank for that as well. The reason we run a storage tank and sensor is so it's not running all the time. Once it gets down to pressure that's it, it stores it so when you press the brake pedal you don't get this pump kicking in all the time. Um, which is a horrible thing to have on EVs. You want it to be as silent as possible, as much as possible. We also have our zero EV throttle pot that we've developed in house. This is the cable drive version, but we also do a lever version. So check that out. Now let's have a look on the interior and see how well that's come out, shall we? Now, when you get into the interior of the MX-5, it looks like an MX-5. We haven't gone all out and made it all futuristic and different. We've kept it as simple as possible. So we obviously have our drive neutral reverse gear selector here and the bulge that you saw me create on one of the previous episodes. We have our standard heating system, which works as normal, but we do have a beautiful set of speed hut gauges that they've supplied us. And yes, they've also sponsored these to us. So I'm going to be a little bit biased. We do use them on most of our builds as well because they do complete, beautiful, custom um, analog but CAN bus supplied gauges, which is really, really good for EV builds because you can just tell them the CAN bus messages you want and what you want to do, and then they'll program it all for you and send you a really nice set of gauges. So as you can see in here, we have our motor temperature, we have our amps, we have battery state of charge, we have speed, as long with indicators and high beam, which is obviously requirements for the UK roads. We also have the ABS light in there as well, just to make sure we don't annoy any of the MOT testers. And we have battery temperature. Now it's a really beautiful set of gauges. So let's get this turned on so I can show you. So they do their thing. The big benefit with the amps one on ours is we actually sit at zero. So when you're driving, you're obviously using amps. Um, but when you're doing to regen, it actually kicks downwards. So you can see how much amps you're putting back into the battery. Um, yeah, that's a really beautiful setup. We also have our trip, so we can have trip A and B, as well as how many miles we've done since we've built the vehicle. So as you see in here, we are now at 1,132 miles since we put this together. We've probably got a couple more thousand miles to put on this to validate this gearbox. Um, so gear selector, super nice and simple. Neutral, um, it'll only light up if the battery management system is happy and all the contacts have closed. If not, this will not light up, so you straight away know that you have an issue. You've got reverse and drive, really nice and simple. In theory, anyone can drive this. And then down here, you have your throttle and your brake pedal. That's pretty much it. I don't think it could get much simpler to drive. 
In here we have a little bit. We actually have this uh, GTT to CAN. So this is a data logger, which actually allows us to take in a load of interesting information. So right now, going into that, uh, two on the gearbox, one on the motor, one on the controller, eight inside the battery pack. Also, all of our canvas data for so amp, speed, battery temperature, state of charge, mode temperature, everything goes into that. We can log all that data and we can then throw it into some spreadsheets at our site and we can see what temperature the gearbox is getting to depending on speed. Um, we can see how many amps we're pulling in relation to battery state of charge. This is the process we go through on every build just so we can make sure everything is tuned perfectly for the vehicle. Nothing is overheating. Um, it means we can also make tweaks to the Orion battery management system um, so we may, maybe that the batteries are getting a little bit too warm, so we can limit things back a little bit, or actually the batteries have got way more power they can give at a lower state of charge, so we'll release a little bit more. Just means we can optimize the whole build for longevity and performance, try and get that perfect balance on the EV build. So let's take a quick look around the vehicle externally, so you can guys can just see how nicely it has actually come out. And then we'll go and stick it on charge. As you can see, we've got our Go Faster stripes. Um, it actually came out really well, but there is a reason behind doing this. When we paint, repainted all the side skirts and redid all the stone chip, the color difference was a tiny little bit off. So this hides the, uh, the slight color difference here, being perfectly honest, um, but it actually finishes the vehicle off really nicely. Um, we've had all the paintwork done, the wing painted, the rear bumper painted, um, and the problem is they've come out so well, it does make the rest of the car didn't look quite as nice. So we've polished up everything on the car to bring all of it up to a really good standard. Now, I don't know if you can hear that noise through the microphone. That is, this car is on. Everything is turned on right now and running. So as you can hear, it's pretty much silent. The only noise we've got is the water pump. That's it. And even then, you can't hear it. And when you're within the vehicle, you can't hear anything at all. Because the only thing you can hear is the Hyper 9 in gearbox, slightly a bit of whir out of that, which is to be expected, but it actually sounds pretty damn cool. Let's have a quick look in the boot. And maybe fuel cap as well, so you guys can see where we've hidden the Type 2 connector. Now, in the original fuel cap, we have our Type 2 connector. Just simply pop it open, twist it, lift it back, and you can just plug the car in to charge. Um, we did modify this a little bit. We've done a nice ABS 3 printed piece that sits in here just to finish it all off and hide the little bolts. Um, it's come out really, really nicely, and it looks perfectly and simple. And the other thing is, yes, it's sat on an angle, so there is um, a couple of drainage holes which go out underneath the vehicle just in case this does get wet whilst driving on the beautiful English roads. In the boot, as you can see, it's just a boot. There is nothing else in here uh, apart from the original boot. Everything is hidden away. Where the original fuel tank was, as we, you all know from previous episodes, we have our charger and DC to DC hidden in there, which gave us really good weight distribution as well. So now we're gonna get this car on charge so you guys can see how easy it is to actually charge up a converted vehicle. Now it's the same as an OEM. It has a type two connector, can charge at any station all around the UK and America. So, and the infrastructure is actually there. So first thing you need is to make sure you carry a type two cable because a lot of them, chargers like these ones, don't have the connection cable. So hidden in the boot of the MX-5, which has magically appeared since we looked in the boot a minute ago, is a Type 2 charge cable, which is pretty simple. Plug that into your wall charger, which these ones are actually 22 kilowatts, but we don't do 22 kilowatts an hour. Um, you plug that in, 
I'd say these were sponsored by Tonic Energy and they're absolutely beautiful charging units. Once you plug your cable in, it allows you to log in, check in your app, etc. We have a little fob. So quite simply, do the fob, authenticates, and it tells you to plug the cable into the car. Really is that simple. Benefit is there's no dirty diesel, petrol fumes or anything like that. Just simply open up and plug in. Then you can just leave it for a little while to charge up. Now this is a 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger inside, so it kicks out roughly six kilowatts per hour. We have a 26 kilowatt hour battery pack, so we're looking at about four hours for a full charge from empty. Most people obviously never get to empty. Um, then this vehicle will do 100 real world miles of me driving it actually hard up and down the motorway, etc. I think if you drove it really nicely around town, you might get 120, um, but eh, that's not bad really for the size of battery pack and the type of car. Now we're weighing in at uh, 1,070 kilograms and we are still 50-50 weight distribution just for those MX-5 lovers out there. Once it's finished charging, it simply shuts down. Unplug it, seal up your Type 2 again. Charger has a beep at you to tell you you've finished charging and how much power you've actually put in. Um, and you simply shut your fuel cap back down again and you're good to go. Oh, and don't forget, Put your cable back in the boot. Now that we're all charged up, we're gonna head out around the front and I'm gonna introduce you to the person that's taking this out to do a review on it. And I really hope he gives us a nice review. So let's see, shall we? If you look to my left, you'll see a link to a video from Johnny Smith. He's the one that's taken this car and given us his non-biased opinion. Maybe, but I think secretly he loves little Japanese cars. I mean, he's got a Nissan Figaro that he says is his wife's, but I really think it's his. So I'm gonna throw him the keys and he's gonna take this out. I've been Chris Hazel from Zero EV and thank you for watching.